Okay. Um, so we'll call this meeting of the Board of Library Trustees to order. And does anyone have any um, recording devices other than the media? No, okay. I think our first order of business is approval of the minutes from January 9th, 2023. And I think we all have them and have had a chance to look them over. Thank you, yep. Trustee Macy Feltz. I will, I will note a, a typo that <clears throat> okay. pointed out. Uh, her name is Mary Beth Persons, not Beth Persons. So I will correct that, <laughs> um, that omission. Uh, okay. Thank you. And I have um, a motion to accept the- Move to approve the minutes with the revisions uh, proposed by member Macy Phelps. Thank you, Trustee Fitzgerald, and seconded by Trustee Persons. Okay, thank you. And move right along to the director's report. Yes. Yeah. So, are we going to take a, a yeah, roll? Take oh, yes. Roll. Sorry. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> All right. Um, let's take a vote. And Trustee Macy Phelps? Aye. Trustee Fitzgerald? Aye. Trustee Persons? Aye. Trustee Ryan? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Um, presently, Trustee Donahue is absent, but that could change. Okay, so moving on to the director's report. Um, do you want to point out some highlights, Director McGovern? Uh, well, I'm most excited to point out that we finally have our bones of a future bookmobile um, in our at the library will soon to be tomorrow. So um, the COA have upgraded one of their vans. So we have um, a hand-me-down van that I think was going to be perfect for what we wanted to do, bop it around town. Um, I had it go to the mechanic at over at DPW to look it over from the top to bottom and it doesn't need anything. Brakes are good. Everything's good. So that's a, that's a starting point. <laughs> so yes, that's a good tomorrow, starting point. We'll be, can take a look at it. I did put a couple of pictures in the report, but um, yeah. tomorrow we'll be living in our parking lot until I make forward progress with now finding out who does conversion van. So I have some <laughs> uh, names and suggestions of where to go. And I do have about 30,000 in capital from last year to refurbish it, to get it started. But I will anticipate seeking um, funding for probably a lot of it if we really want to go to the next level and and have you know Wi-Fi hotspot in there and or different things. So I'm putting together some what those levels would be like. But we do have a small, um, small, not small, handsome amount to to get it where we want it to be. It just bare bones. And now that doesn't need any work. That's already good. So that um, yeah, that's what's exciting. Um, a couple of things going on inside the library that I just want to highlight is that we had a really um, a really cool exhibit in the gallery in January. It was the Chirp Birdhouses, and it was a father-daughter team who started it during COVID. Um, they started making these birdhouses, and they're all different. They were all different sizes and really creative, and they actually have a website, and they sell them now, and they did a presentation on Saturday afternoon, the last Saturday in January, to the community that kind of told their story, and we have we had so many positive um you know, reactions to the exhibit. And uh, it was great. It was nice to see, again, every time we have something new in that space, it really brings so much engagement to that space, um, especially when Susie and Caroline take over the uh, staircase and do different installations. We were kind of doing that quarterly. And um, the other one I highlighted in the report is what we're doing for February is this heart clothespin installation. And it really, um, let me just want to, oh, hold on. I want to see if Nancy's here, sorry. I just noticed that Nancy was here. I'm going to promote her to panelist. So we're collecting um, clothespins, different colored clothespins um, for the community to write their name or something that they love about the community. Um, Oops, that was my watch. And um, so if you are coming to the main or the branch, we'd love for you, everyone to participate and write one so it can be featured in, a, in this giant wreath that they're going to 
make. Uh, the other thing that we have right now, which I didn't mention um, that Caroline put together underneath the stairs, feels like a museum. She, We have two laptops set up with um, a Black History Month display. Um, and you, we have different recordings of famous speeches and little passages of video recordings on a different player. So you can come in and kind of put your headphones on and, and take a few minutes to listen to, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. speech and various ones. It's really cool rather than just a passive um, display. And every time I walk by and see, I had a picture that I found on, I took on Friday of a couple of middle school students actually listening to it. And I was like, that's a really cool moment. So mm -hmm. I didn't get to put that in the report, but I wanted to highlight that if you're coming by this month, it's a really um, interesting way to, to bring again more engagement than just a passive display. So those are some of the highlights of what's going on. Is there any questions or anything specifically in the report that anybody wanted me to talk about? Can I ask about mm -hmm. the a little bit more about the van? Just yeah, remember. definitely. I don't know if I have any answers yet, but I will take just down reminding one. me. So was the thirty thousand part of the capital request for this past year? It was for FY twenty three. Yeah, so it's this FY20. year. Yeah, and that that was specifically for the van. Yep. It yeah. Was. Yeah. It was the amount that I when I talked to um I forget his name now. He does he does bookmobiles and he's from Wisconsin. And so I spoke to him on the phone and, and sent him what type of van we had. And he gave me kind of a list of like, okay, bare minimum, this is what you're gonna look at, and then you can go up and up and up. So I thought that was an appropriate amount to request, especially not knowing what we we're gonna do with it. So um I'm very happy. It gives us a little cushion to to you know get started with it. Um and the um so if in fact you there's a point where you do need any more funding um i, I mean there that would be an incredible opportunity for you know the 21st century <laughs> to be involved oh, yeah. um i was gonna do a grant for the 21st century fund so that's <laughs> so, uh just so just in the early stages that then they, there should be probably some conversations that that happen just in the sense of you know it could be it could be anything it could be naming it could be you know for pieces and parts it could be you know it could be there could be a lot of things to, that go around that that would be a great chance to do it um yeah. also do, do you does somebody do you have to have a special license to drive that no it's just a regular van danielle i think you've driven it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. no it's under it's under ten thousand. so it's just it has a it actually it has the wheelchair accessible little elevator thing, which is perfect because we can use that for the shelves when you roll out shelves at different pop-ups. I've seen Watertown has a new um, bookmobile. And so I've been scouring with how they're using it and different pop-up events they're doing. Yeah. So no, it's a, I drove it the other day. So cool. Okay. No, thank you. Great. Yes. Uh, Mary Macy Phelps, did you have something? I, I did a quick question, Lizzie. You mentioned that that thirty thousand in capital was for FY twenty three. Do you have to spend that by the end of June? No, you can roll that. Okay. Yep. Thank okay. you. All right. Anything else on the director's report right now? And I know there are some topics in there that we'll be moving on to in other places in the agenda. Okay. Um, well, welcome, Danielle Sutton. Uh, Human Services Director, and I know I've spoken to you before, and congratulations on your new position. Thank nice you, Maureen. You're very welcome. Um, uh, Lizzie, did you have a particular conversation you wanted to have, uh, or just to welcome her? And yeah, I was just going to throw Danielle on the spot to. Um, I wasn't <laughs> sure in the fall if I know I didn't think Danielle was able to make it. I, I don't remember, but I know I had uh, written about it in the director's mm -hmm. report for September. So I thought it was a good opportunity just for um, everyone to understand Danielle's role and how we work together now in this kind of new reorganization. It's going really well. That's what I will say. I'm very happy to to work closely with Danielle in this position. So I thought it was good to get face to face as for the board, uh, Danielle. Of, course, you can still go to Chris, but Danielle is another um, avenue for the town if you have questions and yes. I'm not around. So Danielle, you can take it away if you have your elevator pitch speech. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how refined it is, but I'm really happy to be here and happy it worked out that I could come when Lizzie uh, is here too. So I know I see so many like familiar faces that I'm happy to see. People might know me from years of working uh, in the Youth and Family Services Department in the town and served in the director role there from 2009 up until this past uh, July 1st, um, the start of FY23. 
when they put into place a new reorganization for the human services departments of the town. So that looks like um, a new kind of layer between the human services department heads who all used to report directly to the town administrator. Now they would report to this role that I'm in, the director of human services, and I report to the town administrator. And you guys have all, as residents um, and as people who are involved in the town, you've seen this happen in other sectors of the municipal government. So this long, long ago, it happened uh, with under finance with Pam Dukeman going into the finance director role. Um, then it took place in DPW and community and economic development and human services was kind of like the last place for this uh, layering to take part because it's a really different kind of thing. We're all spread out. Library and recreation are these large departments um, that kind of stand on their own. And then you have very small departments like youth and family services and a little mm -hmm. bit bigger with council on aging um, and then veterans. So those are the departments that all fall within human services. And they have really different work, obviously, but so much crossover. And for mm -hmm. something that hasn't changed in this reorganization is that the, th this group of departments has been meeting regularly since I came to Westwood in 2004 and long before that, and it was called the Human Services Function Group. And it was something that was mandated um, from our former town administrator, Mike Gillette, that we would meet all together at least monthly um, to promote collaboration. Um, and, and that's exactly what that was. So always a great place to support each other, to kind of figure out ways to collaborate and to use the resources that we had to try to maximize services. So it's great now that it has a formal kind of organization and we can take that to the next level um, and really just think about how to maximize the work that all these great departments are doing. That's great. Thank you. That's a, a great overview. And certainly um, you are in a position to to know what was going on with all of them. So that worked That's out right. very nicely. And I know that uh, you know, you for a long time have had um, a great working relationship with our library. So, and the right. staff that we are so fortunate to have. So it's great. And I know that actually you and uh, Lizzie have had some conversations since her return um, in terms of some of the dealing with some of the patrons and so forth issues in the library. And that's, we're very appreciative of that. So. Thank you. Thank you for saying so. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a longtime admirer of uh, the Westwood Library, of libraries in general, and the Westwood Library in particular, <laughs> and Lizzie most particularly. So uh, I'm excited <laughs> to be working with her and with all of you uh, in a more close way. And I'm happy to come to these meetings anytime. I'm happy to, um, you know, attend anywhere and to support the work of the library in any way that I can. Um, it's exciting to be able to advocate in a, a new and different way for the work that you're all doing. Well, thank you very much, Maria. Um, could I just ask a question, Danielle? Sure. Um, were, when you were in the Youth and Family Services, did you, were you the one who began the um, the pen pal writing with the high school students? Yeah, that... I am so enjoying my pen pal. In the, oh, I'm so glad you're doing that in, yeah. in high school, and he's just a very nice young man. So it's fun writing to him, and and that is such a wonderful program for people who might not have heard about it. This started, it was a collaboration again to that idea of these departments working together. It was a collaboration between youth and family services and the council on aging um, shortly after we entered into the pandemic. And what was going on was that, see, you know, everyone was more isolated and high school students had lost the ability to do a lot of volunteer uh, work that they were doing before and seniors had lost a lot of opportunity to connect to people in the community. So we started a, a writing program, Westwood Writes, that was pen pals that were matched uh, from the senior population of residents and the high school population. And it was great. My favorite part of that is that when we started it, you might know this, Maria, we had to um, send a template to all the high school students of how to address an envelope, <laughs> oh which is my favorite uh, part of the whole thing because a lot of them had just never done it before. Oh, that's so, wild. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. I, I just yeah. want to thank bit. you for doing right. it because I think oh, it's very good. I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Um, thank you for normalizing Macy that. <laughs> Trusty Macy Phelps? Yeah, Danielle, I'll just say it's it's certainly delightful to uh, to see you in this role. Um, you know, I know we've we've uh, had 
education over the years uh, during your time in youth and family services. So certainly a pleasure. Um, just for the for the record, since I'm the note taker here, I want to sure. make sure I um, I correctly recorded all all of the groups that report to you. You said veteran services, youth and family services, recreation. Is it Council on Aging also? That's right. Council on Aging and then the library, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Danielle? No. Okay. Um, you're welcome to stay with us and, and, you know, there could be another opportunity that you'd like to chime in. Feel free to, to do so. Thank you. Up I'm looking you. forward to joining. Not only okay. because it's bedtime in my house. I was going to say, <laughs> we, we all understand that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the I, next thing, go ahead. Can I, if I just make a yes. comment, I just wanted to thank you, Danielle, because I know you have been a really great resource for Lizzie and, and the other folks in the library um, with this disruptive behavior. And um, and I think it's really, uh, I, I, Lizzie, I guess, are you you're gonna talk about that also? Is that um, is that gonna be something you're gonna- um... No, I should have mentioned it during the report. I, I now that Dan, we're talking to Danielle, she she knows that I'm happy to, to, to kind of just circle back to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, just so because I, because Danielle was kind of boots on the ground in the fall right. <laughs> when I wasn't right. here. And, you know, everyone in this group knows that every year, every fall, when we get a new influx of uh, sixth graders specifically, who um, are now can walk down to the library and it's kind of this rite of passage, it, there's always a learning curve of, okay, so from September to October, we're kind of up to our heads of teaching them how to behave in the library and and also educating parents. And I think that the biggest takeaway I've had this year from my staff was, it's not even so much about the constant managing of the student's behavior in the library. It's also reminding parents that they're not in a program, that they're just like out in an open public space. And therefore the behavior expectations are different and we're not actively watching them. And, you know, as you would, if you were, you know, in an arts and crafts program or something like that. And so I think somewhere along the line, sometimes that message gets confused when you think, oh, okay, my kid's going to go to the library after school and hang out there there's this idea that they're in a program or like they were when they were in elementary school where they would drop them off, but we were actively, you know, in like a book club with them. So, um, and I think that it's, that's the message I always start reminding is that we don't even know all the names. If there's a large group and, you know, someone's shoes are off or, you know, they're tossing a ball at each other in the teen room, you know, it's okay, everyone, this is not library behavior. And then when we have to speak to you again, it's okay, you have to leave for the day. And whether it's raining out, or cold out or snowing, you know, we have to just say like, that's the, this expectations. Now we don't ever want to do that, but we have to, you know, we're not actively watching and managing their behavior. And even the teen librarian, you know, she's in the teen room, but she's also in the gallery and walking around. And so it's more of just reminding everyone that they're just in a public building. And so whether they leave the public building or leave, you know, do whatever, um, and then, so anyway, so there we had a, I guess a really bad fall of just kind of, again, reminding and explaining the library behavior expectations. And these expectations are for teens as well as adults. So that's another thing we remind to everyone is that if an adult acted this way, we would have to also ask them to leave for the day. Um, and then things got better. And then before Christmas break, there's a lot of energy and that tend to happen. You know, there's a lot of things like that that happen and, you know, kids forget themselves. So we, we've kind of had to, it was a little bit more informal, the internal procedure of how we would ask kids just, okay, you got to leave for the day, come back tomorrow, kind of start fresh. Um, but as we realize there's larger groups and we don't know all of their names, it's not as, and, you know, formal to say, you know, you, Joe Schmo have to leave and I'm going to call your parents. Um, the other reason why we can't really do that is because we don't also want parents to know, to think that we are actively watching, that we can call them, you know what I mean? As if you would, it would be, we'd be calling dozens of parents a day. So, um, we do have a three strike system that we've cited that we've asked you to leave for the day and we we log that in an internal instant report um if you have another incident within the week it gets bumped up to a week and then to a month now we have only had to do that to a few um a few patrons luckily we haven't had to do that um, too much usually after a day they want to come back to hang out with their friends <laughs> so it kind of self-corrects majority of the time but there are incidents that um that that doesn't work out so you do have to say you know take a break for a month and then we'll welcome you back in and start fresh and you know and hopefully there's there's a learning curve um 
I know staff are definitely burned out, specifically the children's and the teen staff. And so I've been talking to Danielle about, you know, not just staff training, because it kind of bleeds into security in general. Like if someone refused to leave, you know, when do you call the police? When do you, and I don't want to put the police in a situation where they come down and they go, well, they're not breaking a law, they're breaking a library rule. So there's a lot of nuance to this. And, and I've definitely heard from staff, we want a full staff development day. We want to be able to do training and, and, you know, do run scenarios and really know how to respond, whether it's an adult or a teen. And, and so it doesn't exist out there. As far as I can tell, I've asked other directors, you know, there's different security training or ones about, you know, um, how to deal with homeless um, patrons, you know, very specific things, but nothing that we're looking for. You know, we can't really compare Westwood to even Cambridge Public Library and what they might be dealing with, with, you know, older teens. So, or especially rooms that have teen rooms with a door where, okay, you get kicked out of the teen room. So basically I feel like Danielle and I are going to have to start from scratch and kind of create, as I say, Danielle and I create something that maybe we do bring somebody <laughs> in from the police department and someone from youth and family services and really kind of cobble together a really unique training that um, fits the bill for Westwood specifically and giving us tools because everyone has different thresholds, but everyone, you know, to say, if you don't do this, I'm going to call the police doesn't work when, you know, the common sense of the situation is, okay, well, that's a 12 year old. So we're not going to yes. call the police. If they walk back in, we're just going to remind them you can come back next week. So um, yeah, I don't know, Danielle, if you have any insight into this, but we're definitely responding to it as best we can. Absolutely. I think most recently we just <clears throat> reached out to Allison Borchers, um, the assistant superintendent, and Latifa Frank, because we have seen some of the professional development they've done on the school side. So this is not only is it a, an issue for libraries in general, but it's an issue um, that the schools have talked about and teachers have talked about as a kind of post-COVID type of thing where behaviors are just that much more heightened for young people. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of theories as to why that might be like additional stress levels. It might be missing out on some time of socialization and you know, kind of playing catch up in that way socially about what, how do you manage your own behavior? So there's a lot of theories about why, but there's also um, a lot of school-based professional development. So we're talking to them, you know, they just have a great PD um, program over in the schools and Allison Borchers mm -hmm. is excited to talk to us about people they've brought in who might be able to kind of transfer some of those skills of classroom behavior management and large student group settings to a library. Um, and, you know, I think I've always been impressed you know, even before this with Lizzie and then the children's staff, the skills that they're already bringing to the table, this is just, you know, something that, again, is happening everywhere and is happening in a more heightened way. So we're just going to keep tackling it and, and keep thinking about it. But I, I think the skill level is already really high. Um, but the, the burnout is real for staff and the kind of feeling dread, you know, instead of being able to feel, um, excited uh, all the mm -hmm. time about the the groups that are coming in and also Lizzie you you would know better than I would but it sounds like as it is in most any situation we talk about the majority of students are behaving appropriately right. always are right. you know like yes. doing, I should say that behavior. like you have yes. a, a you know and sometimes you look down and Mary I think you were in the other you know Wednesday and it was the gallery was full no one was misbehaving. It was just very full of, and it's funny because we're at one hand, we're like, they're so loud. I'm like, but they're eating in the gallery. So right. we've gained ground because now they know they come mm -hmm. in with all their snacks and they pack in that space, but they eat in there and then they go upstairs. So I'm like, we call that a win. So it is a lot of that. <laughs> and, and, and as you said, we're, they're not captive audience. So it's not like the classroom where we're like, okay, you know, Joe Schmo, we're going to, you know, give you a timeout or detention. It's hard when, again, they're just in a public space. So we're, it's always trying to manage the fact that we don't have as much leverage over them as teachers do. Uh, trustee Persons? Um, it sounds like you're doing absolutely everything you can possibly do, which, and it's, it's all really, really good. And I think the, I think the important thing, especially reading the report that you had sent us, I think is having the, the policy um, mm -hmm. and being consistent and the documentation so that you can, you know, that's going to just support your staff a lot. And I think they'll feel, they'll feel, you know, much safer that way um, because it's, it's almost like having a rubric in a sense, right. you know, for them to, to somewhat follow. But um, I think the, um, the, the training will be, will be really helpful. And then, you, you know, you, you can have a consistent policy right. um because otherwise if you don't like you say different people could respond differently and then 
then we'll get in trouble. And it'll also protect the library, really. Right. You yep. know, so uh, thank Trusty you. Trustee Ryan. Oh, sorry. That's Trustee okay. Ryan. Um, I just want to compliment you, Lizzie, because I've seen you go out and, you know, when they're, when there are young people there and yep. you say, Hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm the library director. What's your name? So you're making, giving a, a personal connection. And I think having that personal connection, knowing a name, even if you can't remember them, at least you, right, right. they know you. And I just think it's a great way to make them feel comfortable and maybe keep them on their toes a little bit. Well, so. it definitely helps that some of the sixth graders this year started at my baby story time when I started here. <laughs> so I have the thing where I'm like, listen, I won't pretend, I'll pretend that I don't know you. And I'll give you that unless you act up. And then I'll be like, remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. It's a good, good strategy. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, this is very promising. And I think it's great that you've reached out to Allison. She's a terrific resource, I'm sure. I think one of you hit right on it that uh, with parents and possibly the, the kids themselves don't need to learn to see it as separate from school. Um, and, you know, that it's a place to come and be independent, that the parents need to see that, that they're there as an individual patron. They are expected to have certain you know, level of uh, civil behavior in the library, just as any adult would. Um, and I think the more that is clear, then I think also then the um, consequences are clear too. Yes. You know, if, if we expect this of you and if it's not it's different, very different from a school setting where, you know, the teacher or anyone in the building will say, what's your name? and I'm going to contact your parents. That's not the business that we're in at the library, basically. So I think this is a good plan and um, we appreciate your efforts working together on this. And I'm sure the staff will be very happy to have some further training with this, just to help build confidence themselves when they're approaching a student, uh, you know, a patron who is a student as well, or or adult patrons. So, I think that's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, should we move on to the Islington branch library? Yes, an um, update. Just briefly, um, it's still very busy with a lot of families. There's a lot of programming happening in the lower level of Wentworth Hall between youth and family services and um, early childhood, as well as rec. So um, it's busy in the afternoons most most days, which is great with families. Um, the other thing I just want to highlight is, and I'm sure I think maybe Claire talked about it when she came with the living library, that uh, collection at the main library that Susie Canale um, spearheaded, they have transitioned a, a version for the branch as well. Well, um, which is just so delightful. And I added a picture there so you can see it. Um, and since last year, the Bloom Zoom, which is now Living Library Programs, we've been alternating, you know, between one month at the main and one month at the branch um, location. Uh, it's part of our, and I think I added it to our strategic plan. It's part of our kind of all encompassing our programming. And, and again, kind of uniting that we've, we're same library, just different locations. <laughs> so, um, so I wanted to, that that was featured in the Westwood Word newsletter that went out to, to residents. And uh, I'm excited that they have a really vibrant true crime book club that has a lot of um, local, <laughs> a lot of locals that have been joining that. And it's a vibrant group. Um, I can't wait to attend it. So I'm glad that started in the fall and Kristen Barenthaler has been running it and it's still going. So I thought that that's great that we're having new, new fresh new ideas and um, some new staff taking on book club roles, which is great. Great. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay. St strategic plan is next. Um, action items 2023. Yes. Thanks for that. You know, the, the, what you sent is really, yeah, it's great to have it right there to take a look at it. Thank you. So it was interesting. Cause as you know, um, thankfully Charlotte, who was interim, it was due the beginning of December and normally you can kind of 
you can submit it later if you weren't doing um, applying for an LSDA grant and we are applying for the archives one. So they needed mm -hmm. to get it in by the beginning of December. So Charlotte had all of our strategic plan in front of her. She met with um, the department heads and some of the actions were already kind of listed in, in the um, you know initiatives that we had pulled together last year. So they put them together. So I also was seeing it for the first time <laughs> before. So I think at the last meeting, I thought you guys had seen it. So um what I, the only thing I added to it, I added a few, you know, line things that were similar that I just kind of combined, but then um, I added that other column that shows monthly work towards that goal progress. Uh, that's something that I'm on the MLS Massachusetts Library Systems Board and for their strategic plan, that's something that we get every month and I find it really helpful. Um, to see is it's part of the uh, the executive director's update. So that's something that we talked about it not being a plan that you just sit on the shelf. And this is one of the steps that I find that really will be helpful. So every month that I can, I will part of the materials that I provide to you will have that. And it's not that every initiative will have a monthly, you know, action towards it, but it will keep us on track to know, oh yes, in this way, we are also, you know, that's a step that we're taking, even if it's, you know, making phone calls to figure out, you know, somebody who can do shelving for a van, you know, just something that's like helpful that you all know right. what we're working towards. So that I added that column in and I just wanted to highlight some of the things that we already were starting to do, which was, feels good. Um, and the ones that I'm most excited about, I would say, um, <laughs> Library of Things collection. Uh, we've kind of done it in fits and starts over the years, you know, with, you know, having like a kilowatt meter or the, the Wi-Fi hotspots are our biggest one. Um, we have lots of puzzles and games. And over the summer, we we bought uh, lawn games and pickleball and things like that, which were so popular. So we started to add to it. So this, um, but this initiative is a little bit more formal. We need to, you know, put a procedure in place and we want to buy things like a GoPro and, you know, a, a GPS tracker for going hiking and put together kits like a bird watching kit and, and different activities. So um, that I, department heads have kind of come together and made a little committee. Of the you, and so they will be um, starting to, to do that. So we will hope that when we have enough things, it would be great for to even maybe do a little event like a petting, a, you know, a library things petting zoo, as they call it, where you have everything out so people can try and see what you have. Um, we have a great, we have a few storage solutions, which is good for some of the larger things. And then um, using a display case for some of the more technology things that would be behind a case. So you can kind of say, oh, I want to check that out. Um, and of course, packaging it all marketing wise so people can easily flip through and see what we have. So we've already gotten started on that. That's definitely something that everyone's on board with doing. Um, the other thing that I'm excited about is creating a, a digital Westwood library branch. So part of that will be with our website, but you know, we order lots of bo advantage books for overdrive and our, and, and we have hoopla. And so uh, myself and Christy and Abby really want to kind of look more into the back end of that and, and examine you know, the data of, you know, what drives it, how do we highlight it? So it's a little bit more of an internal process than it is just before we can repackage it, but I'm excited to mm -hmm. dig into, you know, how we can reach people who don't want to come into the library, which is, there's plenty of people that we've, that would use the library in that way. So we want to kind of make sure that we're reaching them with our streaming services that are free. Um, of course, the conversion van idea. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing that I'm excited about is reconfiguring spaces inside the library that I'm so passionate about that because maybe it's because I grew up and I always wanted to redesign my room, <laughs> but <laughs> after 10 years, you know, that needs, it needs some fresh look. And, and one thing that Karen and I did last week was the new book area. There's three stacks like this and we flip them and had them straight. So when you walk in and put a bench between them and when you walk in now, you have a place to sit mm -hmm. and they're all face out. It's, a, it's much more welcoming and inviting. And I'm like, why didn't we try this two years ago? Like it's a simple <laughs> thing for now, um, rather than just having to buy all new, you know, furniture, which there's some things we want to definitely purchase to create a few more, you know, welcoming gathering spaces, but, um, it's constant balance of how we can reconfigure our our, uh, you know, bookcases with inviting spaces. I know the second floor has still such a demand for study space and study rooms. I mean, we only have two, but there's, we literally have a bookmark where we're like, these are other libraries that have study spaces because we can't meet the demand. Um, so, you know, it's, it's ha putting our collection on wheels and figuring out how we can move things so that we have more spaces for studying because there's, there's definitely a need. 
Um, and then another big one that we're work that I'd like to work on is that's kind of been in the pipeline with uh, working closely with Westwood Media is on the podcasting booth and a small like media suite center. And I did put in um, some capital money that not for the actual items, but to if we had to like put up a false wall to like create a little room out of a room. And um, so I've been working with Jimmy McCarthy from facilities, he, you know, insight on how we would do that. And um, with partnering with them is that they would bring all the equipment and all of, you know, the technology. And maybe this is something that I would do a grant for if it came over and above where we would need, you know, certain amount of computers. I don't know yet. <laughs> so, um, but the ideas are there. And mm -hmm. I think that would be a great uh, partnership because part of it is they're the step, they're the trainers. So they would be training people on how to use it and do your own podcasting and, and editing. So um, it's definitely in the future and I'm excited about that. That's not probably going to be like this year, but at least we want to move forward with some steps. And then of course, staff development, which I talked about and um, updating all of our library policies and procedures. I know we started last year with collection yeah. development. And so I'm going to assign department heads, other policies that we need to update so I can bring them to, to the board for review. Um, it's important. I think that now more than ever, we, like there's certain things we don't have written down. Um, we don't have a program policy. And it's something that never occurred to me, but now with everything happening at libraries of, of you know, like defending what programs you do or who, who, who can do programs at your library or the nature of them, you know, we have a meeting room policy, which states, you know, if people book this, it doesn't necessarily mean the library is behind it and things like that. But there's a few others that libraries have kind of a little bit more explicit, which I want to look into because in this day and age where, you know, protesters are showing up at libraries, I want us to be... I'd rather be prepared for that never to happen, but I'd rather be prepared. Ooh, I think okay. that's good. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> um, very good. Any questions for Lizzie regards to the strategic plan? No? Okay. That was sounded uh, like it requires a lot of energy. And I, I think <laughs> I think you have uh, great ideas to, to work on. Okay. Um, state aid information. Um, you sent us some information. Um, did you want to? Yeah. Briefly... I just, okay. I just want to explain where I uh, got everything from. So <laughs> it, at the last meeting, um, Danielle, I'm just also I'm remind or updating you. We talked a little bit um, about, I don't remember how it came up, but we were talking about different funding sources and, you know, state aid is a budget line that the lot it's specifically for the library in town. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, we have new members on, and so I thought it was in the best interest of the board to to kind of put together an information packet, basically that kind of outlines, you know, what it is, how we get it, how we've used it in the past, and um, just as an overview of it. And so most of it comes from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. They are the ones who um, who administer this grant. And so every August when I have to do the annual report, I basically send the state all these statistics of how busy we are, how many hours we're open, how many books we've lent out, um, how many you know times people visited our website, very <laughs> granular stuff. Um, they take all that. And the second part is the financials. So we show them that our municipal more than supports us and gives a certain percentage uh, to our materials and our staffing. And every year that has to go up, I think it's 2% um, and it increased to show that the taxpayers in your community are supporting your library. These are just layman's terms basically. Um, and then the state has a budget and whatever they give MBLC, they, you know, it goes to each library based on um, not just your population, but how, I mean, how, <laughs> many things you're circling based on those stats a little bit in your size. So um, this year, uh, last year, I guess you'd say when they did it was pretty good because it's the highest it's been in year in the last five years. Um, mm. I don't anticipate next year will be this high, but um, it this year we got a total of $34,000. So our second installment is coming in March. So they, they um, come two times, uh, one in December, and one usually in the spring. So um, <laughs> I listed our current amount and the amount that we'll have when we get that. And most of the time, because we, I mean, we're very lucky in town based on not just being so fiscally responsible and supportive through our capital um, works that we get through the town, but uh, we have a, a very vibrant friends group. We have the 21st Century Fund that you know supports us with a lot of endeavors. So we have not had to really dip into state aid very often, except for 
um, during COVID, you know, extra masks and stuff like that for PPE stuff. Um, we've used it for, you know, staff events. We've used it for, um, we get our name badges and things like that for the library. Um, the things that came to mind in the past that I've, since I've been kind of here uh, in this role was, you know, we did it for reframing the Philbert Prince, um, the strategic planning consultant and the archives intern in the fall. So, um, you know, it seems like it's something specific comes up, we bring it to the board, we discuss and we use data for that. Um, so it's kind of, and it's there. And I know last meeting we talked about, you know, wanting to explore that, using it when we need it. And I definitely <laughs> have a need for it that it goes into the next line. But um, I guess in general, if anybody has any questions about the state aid info packet, if there's anything, I, I don't know how much I can clarify as I'm still learning the kind of nuances of it, but it comes into play in my in the next book. <laughs> the next uh, trustee Macy Phelps. Thanks, Maureen. Um, yeah, Lizzie, question and you know, sorry to be nitpicking here, but just to make sure I understand this. In the question part of the um the memo that you gave us, which was really super helpful. Um, yeah. by the way. I, I, I just have a, a math question because it says in the last five years we've received an average of twenty thousand dollars, but that's that's me. That was me. I, I was writing that before I got the numbers from Terry. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so I, I was. I, I, have off the, know I can I can estimate it based on based on what. No, it is. Off the top of my head, I was writing it, and I said, oh, "I think it's about twenty thousand. And then 20, Friday, yeah. I was like, "Hey, maybe I'm surprised." Yeah. I was like, "Can you well, pull the five years numbers?" And then I added them in. I did the math, and it was twenty six thousand four hundred and sixteen, yeah. which Ooh. you know, which is great. But as you said you feel that 2023 is kind of a misnomer, which we'll be happy to accept. Um, but still, that's that's pretty good. So. But every year has gone up. Yeah. Know? Yes, it, every year. It, good every year has point, gone up. Mary. And we, and we call up, yeah. all of our trends are, how you know, continue yes. to go in that direction. Yes. Um, I mean, based on the, the balance that we have, you know, if we use $30,000 a year of state aid, it would basically our, our balance would only go down four thousand dollars a year if we got our right. average amount, it, you yeah. know, from state aid every year. You know, we'd have yes. forty four years of a of of, of a, a wiggle room, of, yeah, right, a wiggle right. room. So, yeah. I mean, I I I personally think at some point this becomes a liability for us because you know I don't think the taxpayers really want to see that we have or any other you know, anybody else in the town really wants to see that we're, we're carrying yeah. this, you know, an, an enormous amount of money that right. we're not doing anything with when, yeah. you know, other departments need something or, or whatever. Right. So I, I really do think that there's a point where you, we have to really start you looking at using this mm -hmm. and seriously. You know, at the, they do ask every year we do, I can't remember, I think it's the financial packet part of the, the ARIS report that they do ask you what you have used the money for. I mean, I, I don't know if that's just part of their like, you know, advocacy for it, but every year, you know, they, cause some people use it for, you know, the, their materials, they use it for their hotspots or for mm -hmm. things that are over and above or staffing. So, um, I, you know, the last few years I'm like, okay, what have we used it for? And I'm like, okay, a few things, but not, not, they do ask that. So that is definitely a point. We um, bought the children's room desk also, the addition to the oh, desk. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Them. And then um, the other, um, oh gosh, I just had a point to make about that you mentioned. I was going to come back. To my well, uh, I, I would just add that, you know, we, we have, you know, and the board, changes and so perhaps you know with building a new library doing the Islington we have sometimes perhaps the board of trustees has been um, conservative in in you know managing that um, but I think you know as Lizzie said we are in a place with the town budget and so forth this year you were level funded for the, so you know we have we're very fortunate to be able to use this if we as we need it and we certainly i think mary beth that's a really good point i agree with you we need to um continue to take a look at this um and uh, you know it's not a bad problem to have but it's a good idea to keep um the conversation open i remember 
what I was going to say is that <laughs> a lot of the amount that you get is also based on um, what they call non-resident circulation. So mm -hmm. how many people choose our library that are not necessarily residents and they give you mm -hmm. so to kind of offset that. So that could also be it. So not only are the trending upward, but we do have a lot of other community members or surrounding communities that choose to come to Westwood because they like yeah. our library. So that's how we get a little bit more that comes from that. And they try to yeah. offset. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Is so, there staffing? You know, is, is Lizzie, is the staffing mm -hmm. question that you have, is that yeah. discussion now or is that? Yeah, they just, it's the next one. I, it was about the budget. So <laughs> okay. it was, it was really, I, you know, I haven't two separate places because um, it's, I'm a kind of a big picture person, if you guys hadn't noticed. So um, when I was zooming out and thinking of the last couple of years and how the library is being used and, and where, where there was pressure points. And one of them was, um, you know, when we came back from COVID, programming is through the roof. And luckily we have a lot of in-house talent, whereas maybe even five years ago, we hired out, you know, people all the time. And now we have a lot of dynamic um, staffing here. And so Susie's position is part-time reference. Um, that right now she is basically on the desk and also like prepping bags for, you know, take and makes and doing all these planning programs. And then when she goes to do the programs, we have to hire her out to cover her desk. And so, um, you know, we've talked about this for years of having a dedicated 20 hours that would really be for programming and outreach. And now with the onset of the bookmobile, that is even more pertinent that I have a, a staff member who could actually go out and about using it rather than having to hire subs to come in and constantly cover the desk. So um, basically, I did ask for an additional 10 hours that would really flush out the other part time reference, which is actually vacant right now because Corinne Poveny. Um, moved on to a different job. So that's 25 hours. And I would like to make it 35 hours so that the reference department, especially with mm -hmm. the archives grant we're doing, and there's a lot of projects that are just focused more on that reference and adult services research, um, can be dedicated to that and then have those 20 hours that can, yes, cover the desk, but also you don't have to hire out because they're the ones going to do. So right now, Susie goes to the COA and does a program there. Um, we'll be doing, uh, does programs at the branch has even done story time and can do story time at the branch. You know, there's a lot of um, flexibility there that I, I would like. Uh, Molly Keene, who's the, the town assistant town administrator and um, head of personnel, she is on board with um, making a, you know, a 20 hour or making that 20 hours a programming and outreach librarian. Um, it's just more, of, I get the 10 hours to make sure that the reference desk is fully staffed um, with a dedicated person. And the, the reason why it's coming even closer is because we have to post for this job. So, you know, it, you get a higher quality candidates when you are posting for or, or inviting people for 35 hour full time. And that way their main gig will be Westwood rather than, oh, I'll work 20 hours here and 10 hours there. And, you know, they're mm -hmm. always got one foot out the door. So um, th that's where, you know, Danielle has been talking me through this. We've talked to her since I've been back about how we can maneuver this. So we did, um, that was not funded through the town right now. I know that there was increased asked across the board, every department wanted more staffing. And um, the town, which I totally respect why I can brag about it being so fiscally responsible, it can't impact all of those asks. So um, they, you know, said they could not do that this year. But because I have this vacant position, you know, I really wanted to be able to do it now. And so I talked to Danielle and we set up a meeting to talk to the um, finance department, Stephanie, <laughs> and you, and, um, and really make out a plan because if I were to ask to use some state aid money, which of course it can be used for this and some libraries use it every year for it, we don't want to rely on something like, okay, well, what if we went to, in 44 years? So, um, which they totally agreed with. And I don't, Daniel can chime in any time, but um, I felt comfortable with the plan that if we do use it for 24 fully for the 10 hours, that they would make a plan for each year for like over three years to offset it so they can build it back in. So it wouldn't be FY25. The same people are asking for the same amount of hours mm -hmm. and they're like, it's still not there. Um, Daniel, do you have any insight about that conversation you want to share? I know you were enthusiastic about this plan. Oh. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Yeah, I thought that that was great. We went in just, you know, kind of restating the need and, and looking to see what we, we could do. And 
it was a really supportive conversation. They were just like, you know, we're we're trying everything we can to like here's what we think we could we could do and um you know not have it be pie in the sky. And that's where they came up with the idea of kind of um titrating like down so that there would be state aid used uh this year, less next year, and then heading into um FY25. They thought, do I have that? Is 26. it FY25? I think they were like, yeah, like, yeah. I get confused. So in FY26, the idea is that it would be fully funded. And that's, I now I'm getting a more of a view of other departments. And this mm -hmm. is a similar thing that they try to do when they don't have the money, like right there is to say, okay, you know, can we get this percentage of it, you know, um, this year? And, and, you know, where can you guys find some funding? But they understand everyone's desire starting with the residents and then to the department heads of not having any kind of soft funding for people's positions so it felt right. good it felt like a good conversation like we were on the same page um, and that it was a solid kind of plan okay so is, is that something that you're ready for us to take up tonight or in a decision I I did I don't um it would be great to know that moving forward when my when I when Stephanie and I circle back the and Danielle that we would that I knew I had your support if it moves that mm -hmm. way I mean I'm always ex hoping for a phone call that would just be like never mind it's funded <laughs> through us but mm -hmm. if it doesn't look that way it would be good to know that I can act on it um, mm -hmm. but I understand if the board feels that they need more information or. I need to wait another month. Uh, the, I think the timeline is is we are um, for this position where we are post we're posting it as twenty five, but we wrote we would anticipate it would be thirty five by um, July one. So mm -hmm. when we're interviewing, I mean that's it would be nice to say yes we have a plan it will be in July so that they know that there's a you know four or five month gap yeah. but right that it's confident. So I would mm -hmm. prefer if I had the um, the approval from the board, but. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Yes. So the 10 hours that, you know, so the state aid would be covering the 10 hours. Is, but yeah. is the town covering the benefits mm -hmm. for the position? Yes, they are. Yes. Okay. Because okay. it's um, already benefited. So that doesn't, the 20 hours already benefited. So it doesn't impact them as if you're asking for a benefited position. Oh, it's already a benefit yes. position? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Part -time. So it's only realize. adding it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then Good question. The, the people that you, um, the, gen, the substitute reference people that generally come in to cover, yeah. are there any other, not the same benefits I'm talking about that the town is covering, but are there any other benefits to having them? Like, are they more experienced people? Do they bring any other benefits, you know, to, um, to the library when they come in? Like, a, yeah, you not, know, I mean, I was like, not. like when Hella Helen would come in, you know, right, right. Yes, Helen, no, right? it really <laughs> does depend. Most of the time we try to, um, we try to get, you know, fully, uh, MLS, of course, you know, degrees, librarians to come in. It's some years it's been really hard to get staffing. Or you guys remember that we were constantly posting, um, this summer, uh, we lucked out. We have a two former assistant directors, um, who, you know, this is now, you know, they've retired and they're doing this on the side. So they bring years of experience um, to the table when they come in. And Abby has, it's really great about making sure there's ongoing projects. So something like weeding, you know, you have a section and that you're in charge of. So when you're coming in and it's a quiet evening and you're on the desk, you can still, you know, help out with the collection and, and put your, you know, I think we should keep this or replace this. So, um, and, and we have a culture at, our, at the library, which I love is that if you do have a talent, we want to support it and we want to bring it to the table. So Tina McCusker, who's been, um, I think she's technically a sub, but she works every Thursday night. Um, and she's a teacher. She has been doing great decisions for many years now, and we will be very sad if she ever decides to leave. But you know, so if they have a program idea, you know, they want. But most of the time, if you don't have a regular shift, um, <laughs> there are certain things that you can do when you're when you're you know on the desk. But it's you know if you're just get called in last minute, you know. But yeah, we, we you know ideally we would prefer you know we love to get people who. Um, so would you, know. you not be using people like Tina? Is that the case? No, no. Like Tina is is every Thursday night. She, but she's technically in a sub. But we have like the we have a list of other subs that might work once every five weeks on a weekend rotation, just so I they see. have to put in the door. But then we'd have to call them. You know, can you work this Wednesday night and be on the desk because this person's out? Um, it's a lot of scheduling, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah. and it, that's a lot I, of time. 
Yeah. Yes. And I, I think your question, Mary Beth, is you're looking to see if we're going to be losing oh, no. people by having, right, you know, right. one person right. have yeah. all these hours. Right. You no, know. No. They're still on the, um, the weekend rotation. So they still always have their foot in the door and can still, you know, pick up for vacations and, and sick time. It's just, it's been since COVID, it's been so hard to actually get people that like we have somebody that you might see working Cirque for four hours and then go upstairs to help cover the desk for the evening. And then you also, it's like, you know, but then when you're pulling from the same people in the same departments, then there's no one to cut, like there's less people to cover. So it's, I think we're starting to move out of that as people are, you know, now taking, getting back into the workforce, but it's been really hard, you know, when you only have three people to cover three different <laughs> departments and you're always like, can they work in my department? Yeah. Hard. And I think what you're talking about for this particular scenario is it would also provide more consistency mm -hmm. where it's needed. So, um, so would we, the board, you know, people have more questions or thoughts, uh, would we want to um, make a decision to support um, our director in using the state aid to fund these hours? Uh, should that be what needs to be done? Any thoughts? <laughs> no, that's not Mary. Seems, Maureen, it, it seems to me like a reasonable um, approach, and I, I don't know what kind of approval is needed. Whether it's just a you know a sense of the board, I I could imagine that it's the kind of thing where, as you're putting together the as you get into the details, you could need some flexibility. So mm -hmm. I guess I wouldn't want to be too prescriptive, but right. you know, perhaps we you know state you know in principle that we support the idea of using the. Um, uh, using state aid in a graduated fashion, essentially to get the position started mm -hmm. until with the assumption that it will be fully funded as part of the regular operating budget as of fiscal year 2025, I think we said. I, I agree Am with I, that. Okay. I, I want to make sure that, again, we I don't want someone's position if I saw right, money. Right, that, right. You know. I'm sorry, you cut out. Have a consistent pattern, but, but yes. So I yes. support as long as it's graduated. Um, okay. So, we laid so out. for, uh, but um, I, my sense is that we would need to do an approval the way we have things set up at this point um, for the money for this budget, the current budget that year is being proposed. Well, don't we generally take a vote on that? And well, it is a specific amount. I don't know if we amount. have an amount at this point. Right. right. Because I don't, don't have, have an amount. So, and I understand it. State aid does not require appropriation. Yeah. Right. Always been. It's always been the policy. That's it's past just past practice, practice has always been. Yes. Right. 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 So, so it, yeah. it won't actually show up in the budget. No. Right. No. 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 We've always. Well, we could approve ten hours that we're using ten yeah. hours worth. Yeah. yeah. I think what yeah. we're doing is just just providing a formal declaration of support that right. you know okay. just memorializes the fact that we right. had this conversation that's my understanding of it we, we, okay i was just okay. asking if we needed something more formal because our past practice has been I, to I vote think, on the director's use of the state I, aid i i agree i i agree with you yeah. maureen i think it's a good okay. idea for that reason yeah okay yeah. So, um i'm i'm happy to make a motion that okay. uh, that the you know the the trustees authorize um, the the director to proceed with the the plan to increase the hours for this position, um, uh, as as discussed, utilizing state aid as a as a temporary stepping stone, with the understanding that come you know twenty twenty five it it will be uh, covered within the operating budget, something to that effect. Do we have a second? Really nice. <laughs> I second. So, uh, Trustee Ryan. Thank you. And we'll take a vote. Uh, Trustee Macy Phelps? Aye. Trustee Ryan? Aye. Trustee Persons? Aye. Trustee Fitzgerald? Aye. Trustee Donahue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So it's a unanimous vote in support of that. Um, okay. Um, okay. Anything else on the budget that we need to know currently? All right. So uh, next we have, have the, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, we didn't vote. <laughs> no, 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 I just had, I just had a question. Um, Lizzie, 
just uh, on the current year budget, any concern? Oh, yeah. I, I glanced at it, didn't see nothing really stuck no, out at me. You know, there's always a few ups and downs. And, yeah. No, I think um, we're I know there's something she spend in bulk and other things kind of more evenly through the year. Just is anything keeping you awake at night? No. <laughs> Thankfully, I came back. I sat with Barry, and I'm like, "Oh, what a relief!" We're I was so focused on 24, but no, we're 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 good where we are. Um, I just mentioned that there's a couple of 23 capital things which I don't have to do by June that um, that I am working on. But no, I think we're good for staffing, and we're good um, across the board with our materials budgets. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay, um, we have a poet laureate update from Maria and Nancy. Nancy, do you want to? Well, well go ahead. Go ahead, Nancy. We, we had a meeting and uh, it was a very productive meeting. Uh, I think all of the people who participated in the meeting gave good input. And I think we had two outstanding candidates for Poet Laureate, Adult Poet Laureate, and uh, we reviewed. Uh, actually, Karen Moriarty had established a folder, and that folder had uh, a resume of the candidates, and it had a writing sample and uh, a poetry sample. And uh, we came to a decision, and it was a unanimous decision. And I think everybody was very happy with the outcome. And I thank uh, all of the people who participated in the committee because I think they did a great job and I, I was very happy with the outcome. Yes, That's it was great. a great and meeting. So, I should very say that good. the next steps. Um, we set up a rubric and we even uh, accomplished, he accomplished with, with everyone's input, um, the, letter, the letters of rejection that were very kind and very encouraging them, for them to try again and the selection of the person. Um, who will be the poet laureate. So it's, it was a great outcome. Okay, and Lizzie, the next step, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, sorry. I just wanna make sure the next step is a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Right, yes. Right. And yeah. I also would just point out that um, we should, Lizzie, you should work with um, the town council because I think we need a letter of agreement yep. because this position is going to, stipend is going to be paid for by the 21st Century Fund. Yep. So we need to know uh, in writing, you know, the amount and how the payments are going to be made and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you, Paul. I was um, I reached out to um, Tish Healy and Chris Coleman about that. The board had came to a recommendation, but I, since this is our all of our first time, I said I don't know what you know what the next steps would be for the select board. So. Um, we were asked to, uh, I think he's meeting with the uh, select board, uh, but we're going to be on the agenda for the next meeting, which is February 27th. And um, we were, and Chris thinks that member, if everybody could come that we're on the selection committee, that would be great. So I'll be sending out an invite and we will tell the, the recommendation the, beforehand. We haven't alerted this person yet, but we will be great if they attend as well and can be there. Um, so, but before I do that, I do have a plan to ask town council about how, how that will lay out. Cause I've never written a letter of agreement before. So it's it, on my, it doesn't have to be all that complicated, just the amount of the stipend, how, you know, how when, came, how will, you know, what it will be at one point, one time will it be, you know, quickly, yeah. and then I, they would, you know, I think the agreement should provide that a request for a payment and receipt, whatever is submitted to the 21st Century Foundation. And then so that everything is 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 documented and and the foundation would have a record for its okay. payment. Yeah. And the um also the uh, cultural council is donating a hundred dollars a year for expenses. You know, something might come up. Maybe uh, a, book, a, a bookstore certificate for the poet, the teen poet laureate, um, any expenses that may come up for the poet laureate outside of the stipend, just mm -hmm. to help cover up, cover. That's so. right. Nice. That's great. Very good. Okay, thank you. Um, and an update on the 21st Century Foundation. 
Sure. Yeah. The, um, the the fund board met on January 17th. And at that point, we reviewed um, the, the prior year, 2022. Um, I, I, I want to ex make a, a public mention of our appreciation for our board members who manage our endowment. Torsten Becker and Brian Mulvey, they are you know, financial professionals. And uh, boy, last year was a year when you needed them. Um, and uh, they, you know, they, get, they gave a full accounting. Last year was an extremely challenging year in financial services um, because uh, it, it, was, it was a challenging for both stocks and bonds. Um, so there was, a, in effect, no real good place to be with investments last year. However, um, the, the fund was very uh, carefully managed and um, uh, fared better than most of the indices that you would see out there. So we're, the, the fund is in good shape. Um, so, you know, again, uh, thanks to Torsten and Brian for uh, being such effective managers uh, and good stewards really of, uh, of that endowment. Um, our, we did complete the, the, uh, the fundraiser, the, you know, the annual appeal that we sent out and did well. Um, it was down slightly from the year before, but still more than adequate to our, to our needs, uh, you know, to maintain that public um, fundraising uh, activity every year. Uh, we had uh, a good, healthy discussion about uh, some, you know, some ways that we might enhance our, our, just in general, our appeal activity in the future. And for one thing, by thanking our donors and engaging more, um, you know, more regularly with our, our donors, because we do have quite a few uh, repeat donors as well as a number of new ones every year. Uh, one thing that, that we discussed was when the bags come in, um, we had talked with Lizzie last year about ordering bags that have the likenesses of the two libraries on them um, mm -hmm. uh, with the brand, you know, the, the, the fund's logo. And I think they might've just come in, Lizzie. Did I see something come across my phone to that effect? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, the thing that we could do is use those as a thank you to, um, you know, to our donors and also to have a presence um, it, it, at, at, at the library. So Lizzie and I are, are working on perhaps having a poster board that would just help get word out. Ah, there's a picture of the bag um, that would help um, nice. just increase the, the visibility of the, of the fund in the library as well. So number of good ideas that, that we had. Um, you know, final point is that, uh, you know, as, as we know, Mrs. Persons uh, is not going to be running for re-election, so she will no longer be able to serve as treasurer for the 21st Century Fund. So, you know, she did report that to the board and you know, talked about the, the fact that she is looking into, uh, you know, some alternatives, ways that we outsource some of our treasurer-related activities. And, you know, obviously we hope that um, with uh, uh, whomever is, is going to be on the trustees, Next year, um, you know, we hope that that we'll be able to have an appointment to the, you know, the the fund that will um, that will will help in that regard as well. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? And okay, Mary, thank you, Mary Beth or thank Paul. You. If I missed anything, please. Oh, I think that was a very good precis. <laughs> <laughs> very <Thank> thorough. <laughs> okay, um, okay. So we need to. Um, take a look at and approve uh, hopefully our uh, acceptances and expenditures for the month of February. Mm -hmm. um, any questions about this at this point? Okay, I will accept a motion. Move, move to accept the, uh, the uh, expenditures and ex acceptances for the report dated February 13, 2023. Thank you, Trustee Fitzgerald, a second. Uh, second. Trustee Person, thank you very much. Second. And we'll take a vote. Uh, Trustee Macy Phelps? Aye. Trustee Fitzgerald? Aye. Trustee Persons? Aye. Trustee Ryan? Aye. And Trustee Donahue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So that, and I'll be up to find the yellow folder. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So this would be the point uh, where we have um, any new business would be the time to bring it up now. Is there anyone who has any new business to discuss? I have one question. Um, okay. It's not necessarily new business, but it's a new topic. Um, you know, uh, Lizzie, you send us the stats every month. Mm -hmm. I was just noticing that over last year, and I know last year was still kind of coming out of pandemic, but our door count is up 42% mm -hmm. 
which I was like, okay, I mean, that's an exorbitant amount, but I'm like, all right, I understand that it would be up quite a bit over last year, but our circulation is still down by like 10%. So I'm trying to figure out like, well, first of all, big picture, does that make sense to you? Does it make sense that we have that many more people in the library, but you know, our CERC numbers are still, you know, are they coming in and you doing like, I, I was like, programs didn't seem to be up that much. Right. And like, there are more people maybe bringing in kids because the kids yeah. stuff was up. So is it just, is it coming in that way? I was just trying to figure out where is it flushing out? You know, I think it's two things. I think we were using an, a different system um, for the, we have the gates and we yeah. were pulling numbers, but we installed sensors in the last year, which is um, it's there's counters that was for like capacity of the building and it gives you what busier times a day and it can send you reports. Okay. So I don't know if part of it, there's a slight discrepancy from how the gates were not the gates. We re we stopped using the gates as the numbers because they were not capturing every body walking through. They were stopped okay. working. So I think part of it is just a technical discrepancy between using two different softwares basically. But I would say I've noticed that too. And I think yes, programs coming to programs, but I also think, like I said, the second floor, we've got tons of people um, using the second floor, but are not necessarily checking out books. They're there to study or to do work and stuff. And, you know, like all the high school kids every evening. Um, and then I think you hit the nail on the head that children's has been just so busy. And so you'll have, you know, but you could have a five, you know, people come through the door just for like with one family. So I think it's some of that. I think mostly it's the, that the gates were not capturing as much as well as they should have, but I it's, it is interesting to zoom out and see, okay, what's happening. What are the trends, you know? Well, you know, and then in the past, like when something like that stuck out the, there, sometimes there was a problem with the recording, you know, it was, that's mm -hmm. happened over the years. Yeah. So I'm I'm not at all surprised that you're saying that, but um. So, but anyway, thank you. That was that that helped. Okay. Um, uh, Trustee Ryan, um, I have a kind of a question too, and I don't know if it'd be new business or not. But do you have cameras set up in the library to capture images of people coming in and going out and various so things? We um. Are the system that was installed with the new library, I think there is there's one, um, there's a few. They're not accessed by um, the staff. They are accessed to right to the police station. Um, so there's like one in the children's department and in the back stairwells and stuff. That actually technology is so old that we are, um, Jimmy is actually coming this week to with a different it's not just um, cameras. It's like a whole security yeah. thing so that all the town buildings will be properly have cameras um, inside and outside and key fobs and things like that. So it's, it's definitely uh, moving forward that we'll be updating it. So I, cause I don't even know, I don't have access to those, the, to the cameras as they are. I'm sure some of them are like facing the floor and not even like where they should be aimed at. So we're getting um, that whole system is being updated in you know, this year. Okay. That's okay. Good. Thank you. There you go. Thank you for the question. All right. Any other questions, comments? Okay. This would be um, a time for um, anyone who is uh, participating from the public, members of the public who might want to comment um, or ask a question. Um, pardon me? There's nobody in the. Um... There's nobody. Okay. Thank you. All right, so uh, given that, um, we could adjourn and uh, move to adjourn. Trustee Fitzgerald, a second. Pardon me? I said 813. I know. <laughs> uh, do we have a second for adjournment? Okay. Trustee Macy Phelps? Okay, and uh, let's vote. Trustee Macy Phelps? Aye. And Trustee Fitzgerald? Aye. Trustee Persons? Aye. Trustee Ryan? Aye. And Trustee Donahue? Aye. And uh, the chair votes aye. And thank you, Director Sutton, for joining us this evening. Thank and feel you, free to come anytime. <laughs> I hope so. It's really fun. Thank okay. you very much, Danielle. Nice all to right. see you. Good to see okay. you all. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you March 13th. Ha <laughs> ha.